I can't say that. Do you know what most bothered me back there in the back while we were praying? Would I be praying so zealously? And would I be so concerned about these meetings if they weren't ours? If they weren't sponsored by heart cry? And if I was not preaching? I do so much for me. So much of my food stinks. It's fodder. I'd be a hypocrite to stand before you and say those words are mine. But Jesus could always say, my food, my sustenance, the thing I live for is to do the will of my Father. That's why how much a man prays will tell you a lot more about him than how much a, how much a man preaches. You can preach for a lot of reasons, but to pray in secret is to do the will of the Father and to eat a pure food off the Lord's table. One of our greatest problems, and we learn this, we say this, but listen to what we're saying. One of our greatest problems is, yes, we really are not like Jesus. There is much in the reform movement talking about the law. Men will be judged by the law. And there is truth in that. Men will be judged by the law. But it is a small thing for me to be judged by the law. Put Paul Washer in the scale. Put the law on the other side of the scale. That's one thing. Yes, I will fail. But you know something that is a harder measure? Put Paul Washer in one side of the scale. And put the perfect man, Jesus Christ, on the other side of the scale. To be compared to Him. That is our goal. It could be said that is our only need. To be like Jesus. The most dangerous prayer a human being could ever pray. Lord, make me like Christ. I don't care if you have to dethrone me. I don't care if you have to tear apart my ministry. I don't care if you have to destroy me. I don't care what happens. Make me like Jesus Christ. It's practically calling a death sentence upon yourself. But then again... Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. His will was to do the will of His Father. It also, it says in John 5, 19, Therefore Jesus answered and said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself, Unless it is something he sees the Father doing, for whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. The Son can do nothing of himself. A Chinese Christian, after visiting the United States and seeing all our churches and everything, do you know what he said? He said, I am absolutely amazed all that you people can do without God. It's absolutely astounding what you can achieve. But Jesus said, I can do nothing. I can do nothing apart from Him. We marvel at the Declaration of Independence. What we need is a Declaration of Dependence. Absolute dependence. It is so hard for those of us raised in a democracy to understand absolute sovereignty. To understand that He is Lord. And we're not to run behind Him. And we're not to run ahead of Him. We're to walk beside Him. Walk beside Him. Hopefully, as a, as a young man grows in his ministry, usually a young man, his ministry is, is marked by activity. Just activity everywhere. And when all the sawdust finally hits the floor, well, there's just nothing but sawdust. But as he grows older, there's less activity, so that he would even be labeled as not quite as zealous as before. But much more is done. Because he's seeking only to do what the Father would have him to do. Now, also, in John 5.30, one of my favorite texts in the Bible, it says this, I can do nothing 
on my own initiative. I can do nothing on my own initiative. How much do we do on our own initiative? Is it not the great sin to take the matter into our own hands? And we've been taught that even in our own culture. Man needs a car, doesn't have money for it. What does he do? Goes to the bank. Takes the matter into his own hands by his own initiative. And he gets the job done and he's in bondage to it. Instead of a man saying, I, I, I need a car, I have no money, Father, I need a house, I have no money, Father, I want to do this thing in the name of Jesus Christ and in the ministry, but Father, I will initiate nothing. Show me, lead me, guide me. Absolute surrender to Him. Absolute surrender. It's not something I'm giving testimony about with regards to myself, but it is something I'm telling you about with regard to Jesus Christ. I want you to see Him, yes, as God in the flesh, but I want you to see Him as a man totally submitted to the will of God. And I want you to see that that is what you are called to. Prayer is a little thing unless this giant is first slain. It is the end of self-will and submitting ourselves to Jesus Christ. There ought to be a way in which we could answer every question like this. Someone says, well, why did you go there? or Why did you do this? The answer, because I I believed it to be God's will. Well, that's an absolutely great opportunity that's open to you. No, I have no opportunity except the doing of God's will. If all the doors in all of creation fly open and God says, stop. And you'll bring glory to God by stopping. And you'll save yourself from a whole lot of peril. Not only that, and this is the part that I really want us to look at. In the absolute submission of Jesus Christ to the will of the Father, He was absolutely dependent upon the working of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ... You see, in his, hum- in his humiliation, in His incarnation, laying aside His robes of glory, yes, still God, but yet walking on this earth as man, He did what He did in the power of the Holy Spirit. Submitted to the will of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and therefore, again, our elder brother is our example. We can't simply write him off as, well, I'll never be like my elder brother because he was God. Well, there is a great deal of truth in that. Your elder brother was God. No, you will never be like him. But you should learn from this. Your elder brother who was God became a man. And as a man, he walked perfectly submitted to the will of the Father and absolutely dependent upon the working of the Holy Spirit. And that is something. We do not strive for deity. But we do strive to be like Him. To be submitted to the will of the Father. And to be empowered, dependent upon the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to read a few passages that are eye-openers. Luke 4.1, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Spirit in the wilderness. Do you see that? It's a forceful word. He was cast out into the wilderness by the Spirit, Matthew tells us. He was led around in the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. 